Ahead of Led Zeppelin releasing their sixth record physical graffiti in February of 1975, the band was planning on doing a winter tour of America. Led Zeppelin at this point in their career were one of the biggest rock bands in the world, and their tours became known for their excess and debauchery. But ironically, it was not the band themselves, but their fans that got Led Zeppelin banned from the city of Boston. That's pretty amazing, considering that Boston's mayor at the time wasn't some sort of anti-rock crusader. In fact, he went to pretty extraordinary lengths to bring some major rock acts to the city of Boston, going as far to bail out one band out of prison. Let's explore what happened in today's video. Author Stephen Davis, who covered Led Zeppelin during their 1975 tour, claimed to WGBH.org, Boston was a very important town for Led Zeppelin. They broke out from England in the early days in early 1969 at the Boston Tea Party Club, where they played a series of tumultuous shows. And then in 1969, 1970, and 71, they came back around nine times, and they played kind of everywhere, he remembered. As part of their 1975 tour in America, Led Zeppelin was planning on doing a show at the Boston Garden on February 4th. Before the days of the internet, fans had to line up outside of the venue's box office to purchase tickets. On January 5th of that year, it was announced that tickets for the show would go on sale the following morning. One estimate put the number of tickets being sold at around 9,000. On the evening of January 5th, it was estimated that around 3,000 fans showed up to get their place in line to buy tickets. But not helping things was the fact that it was January, the temperatures were almost freezing, and a lot of people weren't dressed for the weather. As the night wore on, it got colder, so around 11 p.m., the box office staff allowed the eager fans to camp out in the lobby of the venue under the condition they would behave themselves, and, well, you can guess what happened next. Things went awry during a security shift change when, according to Davis, the kids broke into the beer concessions and started feeding themselves, and when the next shift came on, they turned the fire hoses on them. Then they turned the fire hoses on Boston Garden. Then they started to torch the seats, you'd remember. According to the website CelebrateBoston.com, 11 concession stands and two souvenir kiosks were broken into, and 300 cases of beer were looted and consumed on site. In addition to the fire hose fights, fire extinguisher fights also occurred, which left a chemical residue throughout the venue. The rowdy crowd also managed to drag a piano out onto the ice and damage it. Riot police with dogs would be called in to quell the crowd, and by 5.30 a.m., everything seemed to be under control. What's amazing, though, is that there were no arrests and no injuries, despite the fact that police confiscated several knives. I've seen varying estimates of how much damage was done to the Boston Garden, and they seem to range from $10,000 to $50,000. Davis, who was in Boston at the time, went down to the venue following the riot and would tell the same publication the place was a smoking ruin. It was completely flooded. It was like the place had been bombed, he'd remember. The tickets would go on sale to the public at 2 in the morning, and by 6 a.m. they were all sold out. Following the mayhem, Boston's mayor Kevin H. White banned the group from playing the city for up to five years, refusing to issue them a permit. White wasn't some sort of anti-rock crusader. He served four terms as Boston's mayor and was popular with the city's rock-loving fans. Following Martin Luther King's killing, riots broke out across the city, and James Brown was scheduled to play a concert in Boston the next day. The city's police chief was hesitant about whether allowing 15,000 people into a venue so close to the site of the riots was a good idea, and Brown almost cancelled the show. White would persuade the singer to do the show and even appeared with him on stage to appeal for calm. Then in 1972, the Rolling Stones were scheduled to play Boston, but they were arrested in Rhode Island, which threatened their date in the city. White was able to persuade the authorities in Rhode Island to release the band from prison so they could make it to their show in Boston. When Led Zeppelin did their final tour of North America in 1977, they would skip out on Boston as their band still persisted. Funny enough though, Led Zeppelin wasn't the only group to be banned from playing the garden. Garden. The Grateful Dead were banned after they were caught cooking lobsters near a fire escape, and the group Kiss was banned because they did not adhere to the venue's pyrotechnics policy. It would come out years later that Led Zeppelin's guitarist Jimmy Page wasn't even aware of the ban. He would take to social media several years ago and say, I was blissfully unaware of any of these shenanigans, but the mayor was by all accounts a Rolling Stones fan. I played in Boston again in 1995 at the Fleet Center with Page and Plant, he'd remark. Meanwhile, White would serve four terms in office and would be the subject of several corruption investigations that he would escape charges from. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and if you guys have suggestions for future topics you'd like to see us cover, use the google form in the description box below. Take care.